Hey guys, it's Jan, and uh, I wanted to cover a new car that I built um, maybe about, about uh, like a month ago or so. And it's a Super FM car again, and um, I wanted to cover it because I recently had some ideas because I saw some of the uh, Japanese uh, Super FM guys uh, that have been um, changing the way that they set up their Super FM cars, wherein they make it more JDM style, like uh, with a longer tail and like a shorter nose. I'll give you a quick example of what I have. Like uh, this car has a bit of a longer tail if you see my winning bird, which I'll probably do like a video later on. Wherein they, they designed the long tail specifically to maximize the, uh, the shape of the car where you could actually basically um, fit it in here in the box with the maximum dimensions, maximum length. And what that does is that it um, makes it so that the brakes apply more quickly. And um, the way that they do it is that they cut the front, they make it a lot shorter, and then they lengthen the back. The problem with that though is that you have to cut the bumper off and basically sacrifice the rigidity of the front. Or, or whatever you have left of the rigidity so, and so I didn't want to do that I decided to change my to change the way that I have it set up so I decided to create my own way of making the uh, front underguard and uh, I guess I'll start with it so that you guys could see um, this is the underguard that I have um, it has about like four different pieces and um, Let's, I hope that you guys could see this in the video. I'm running two of the front multi-roller setting stays. Like, uh, let me see if I could show you. You need two of these pieces right here to um, bolt onto the uh, the front bumper. You make the normal old like uh, setup that I used to do. If you guys want to see that, you could check out that video. It should be in one of my uh, playlists. Uh, to me a mini four-wheel drive build if I remember correctly and um, you basically drill through the bumper and um, and uh, mount the four holes and then drill through it and then um, screw the um, screw the plates on but like um, you, could, uh, you could that's how I reinforce the bumper and then in order to make this piece right here that connects the uh, underguard itself to the bumper you need to cut this piece off this is the um, um, 15430 and um, it's kind of hard to tell how it works. I'll have to, I think, do a separate video. If you guys really want me to go in depth into how this is made, let me know in the comments or send me like a PM on YouTube or even message me on Instagram. Uh, I will make the video if you guys want me to and uh, I'll show you how this, how the whole front is done. It's basically the same way that I used to do the old one, except I just change everything to FRP. And it's, um, if I remember correctly, it's a lot lighter. The way that I build it right now. And um, I'll show you that like after you build it, um, the, 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 the initial problem with it is um, it, will, it will barely fit inside the box once you put it on so right now I have it perfectly mated so that it fits just snugly inside the box maybe there's about like a half millimeter left in the back and that's about it the left and the left and right are gonna be you know snug too because I'm running eight millimeters on the front end on the back and uh, initially once you first build it the front will jut out just a little bit that would won't perfectly fit within the box so you have to um, file a bevel down here to make it mesh with the front so that the dimensions fit perfectly inside the box so you can see after you've done that after you do that it fits just snugly in there and then you'll see it it'll help make it so that the the front and the back basically apply sooner and um, that'll help you with braking and uh, you know prevent you from flying off of slopes even though super fm is already good on slopes it, it just makes it even better i've already uh, gotten second place in one of the races that i've like raced this in and uh, 
I'm pretty happy about how that turned out. Um, I'll do. The, I'll go through the rest of the setup, and then we could continue on with some of the changes that I've made to the car too, because uh, I've changed the way that I built Super FM a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to quickly cover the changes that I made from the original to the new one. Um, this one was the first prototype that I had the, um, uh, what do you call it, the underguard. And uh, I used carbon last time. And then I switched over to a three to the um, double popsicle design, basically. Um, you basically just glue two pieces together instead of using a carbon piece. And it's a lot cheaper, you don't have to worry about spending too much money when you're doing that. Uh, you glue those and then you drill through the hole and then you make it so that one of them has like a bigger hole than the other so that you could use the other one as a support to connect to the plate that you have that we have over here and um, I converted to a three millimeter carbon because I had my other plate over here uh, basically like snap so I'm, I'm, I'm trying not uh, I'm trying to not break any more like front uh, carbon plates on this car. Uh, I use the AL A30s now. That's a lot smoother when it's going through the turns. It's, I use the same thing for the back. The rear hasn't really changed as much as before except for the underguard which I'll show you. Um, now the underguard I have an anti-catch uh, setup basically. This is the um, front fully cowled plate. It's used for the fully cowled body so that it doesn't like um, hit the body and um, instead I use it for the underguard so that it blocks any sorts of like wall catching and um, basically you could do something like this if it catches on the side of the wall it'll just slip off and the same way for the other side if I'm using this as a wall since it's a 50 millimeter height as well it should um, it should slide off easily if it like hits a wall prevents that from happening and um, the body damper I've changed a little bit um, instead of the old way where I have the uh, body damper hanging towards the side right out here I have it now mounted like further forward and in order to make that let me take this off first so that you guys could see a little bit better and my lighting is casting shadows all over the place remove that lock nut There's a, the piece that you use for this is the um, Rare AR plate. Um, I used the uh, FRP version because I couldn't find any more of the front. And um, oh, it's actually not the Rare, it's the front plate. Let me show you. This one even, I think this is a 2012 or 2013 year. It's basically this shape right here. The um, 15451 FRP wide front plate for AR chassis um, that is used uh, this piece is used to build this out in order to get that you cut this piece out right here just cut a line through it if, if you have a Dremel or you could even like give a little bit of an extra width away from the holes because you want to keep as much uh, of the piece itself together before you actually cut it off. And um, if you guys want me to show you how to do this too, I'll, I'll do another video for that with the uh, the front bumper. And um, you use that as a catch and that makes it so that it rests a little bit further forward like that on the body, the way that it's setting. Because before it would be further to the side and the balance is a little bit better if you do it this way. But, you know, your mileage may vary. I think this is better this way, but, you know, if you are if you have your setup just the way that you like it, then you don't have to change yours. But this, I, th I personally think, is better. I've had my own successes with it. And um, nothing else has really changed. I still use kind of the same body because I like the Thundershot. The Thundershot is basically the same as before. And uh, nothing else has really changed on it other than I cut the wings off, I cut the holes out a little bit and made it a little bit lighter. And as a whole, um, this chest, this, uh, this, this build is a lot lighter than that one. 
um, because I took out the aluminum wheels. Although I gained some weight and then I lost some on the way that I changed the build. Let me put this back together so I could show you how much it weighs with the um, additional batteries in there. Um, it would be, if I remember correctly, like maybe around 180 grams, maybe less. Because uh, I have the um, Sanyo Eneloop lights. Those, those are a little bit of the older versions. Right now I don't have any springs because I've run out. If I have more, I'd probably put the springs back on this thing, change the build a little bit, and put it back on. But right now I have nothing that keeps it back. But, you know, it has won me like, it has gotten me second place before, so I don't think it's much of an issue. Let's see. Let's balance that out. As you can see, it's still solid. The balance is actually really solid if I if I you know like to be honest the good thing with the the rare two um, that allows me to run the AOA 30s if I if you don't have the anti catch it will basically catch a lot because of the way the the nature the nature of having the AOA 30s on the edges they're on the edges so they're more likely to catch on the walls now with this setup with the anti catch it allows it allows me to run the you know the very fast ball bearing rollers and it makes me not worry about them catching on the walls after they go through slopes or jumps um, let's see how much it weighs hopefully you could see the uh, the digits okay Oh, there you go. It's a lot lighter than I remembered. 175. That's still relatively heavy compared to some of the other builds out there, especially something like a a uh, lightweight Super 2 or a lightweight uh, VS setup. You know, the Japan style. But it's solid. If you if you want to make sure that you don't you know have like a bad jump off of slopes, Super FM is, in my opinion, the best when you're dealing with a lot of slopes. If you have weird jumps like let's say the orange jump that they made right away uh, that they made I think like a couple of months ago they uh, these are a little off because of the nature of the physics of Super FM where it just tilts forward right after the jump but you know this, it depends on your setup I don't like running these when there's um, orange jumps so I prefer to use um, a rare motor setup on those sorts of jumps in my opinion they work better um, let's I'm gonna see. do the testing and I will end up basically showing you guys how the setup works depending on the track. Let's see, and that's about it. So 175, 174.9, not bad. Oh, and I guess you could listen to the sound too. Okay, I'm gonna test out the uh, Super FM Thundershot. Let's see how it works out because I have no brakes, so I have to really use like a super light motor. Let's see how it works. That's really slow. <laughs> it's unstable.
The good thing about no brakes is that it's gonna jump the same way every time, but like you can't really push a car that easily, so you can't use a hyper dash. I, this car can't really take a hyper dash on this track because it doesn't really slow down. It just slides over the slopes. Okay, so that's the uh, Super FM Thunder shot. <laughs> 